The National Army has been engaged in a confrontation with the regional Tigray People's Liberation Front. So essentially, it goes back to 2018. That's when a popular uprising brought uh, Abiy Ahmed to power. And one of the things that he did was he dismantled Ethiopia's ruling party. Basically, a power struggle between um, the federal government and the Tigrayans. This is really one well-armed, well-trained military against another well-armed, well-trained military. The Tigray People's Liberation Front is a battle-hardened um, group that uh, late learned lessons from the Burmese war. They basically dominated Ethiopia's political, economic, and military life. And the guys who ran the show were the TPLF, the Tigray People's Liberation Front TPLF. They have dominated the security and the military for almost three decades, and they have all the information and the top secrets of this country. They have the fault lines. They know where to trigger. So while they're up against airstrikes and more advanced military tactics, they are uh, very well seasoned guerrilla fighters. And they were sidelined. They took off to their home region in northern Ethiopia, and Abi has since accused them of stoking ethnic violence and holding illegal elections. And he says last week they organized a multi pronged attack on the Ethiopian military. The public trading of insults has descended into war. Two very powerful adversaries. And, and the government says that the TPLF has stolen weapons, including uh, some missiles that might be able to reach the capital, Addis Ababa. The uh, Ethiopian federal government says it's going to launch an um, assault on the city of Mekele. In the regional capital, Mekele, what's the current situation? This is looking grim. Uh, the Ethiopian government says that its soldiers have killed about 500 fighters. It's uh, now beyond civil war. It's getting a kind against humanity. The UN warns Ethiopia and the neighboring region could be destabilized. The situation is transforming itself into genocide. And I think the key to this is that the Prime Minister really needs to announce a date for elections. But also make it clear that, that we need to start seeing independent international investigations. In addition, um, you have a leader who's rejected calls for reconciliation. Saying Ethiopia, quote, doesn't need a babysitter. Uh, Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed says that there will be no negotiations. He says that their focus is to bring the TPLF, what he considers a rogue regional government, to justice. And his air force is now bombing targets in his own country. Prime Minister Ahmed was the recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize last year, and now he's behind this major burst of violence. With aid agencies warning of a humanitarian disaster, it comes after the Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed launched a military operation. The Egyptian forces crossed the Ethiopian Tigray border and uh, since last week there was heavy offensive against Tigray and leaders challenged the central government. In this comes as Reuters is reporting the United States believes our Eritrean soldiers have crossed into Ethiopia to fight alongside the Ethiopian military in its battle against Tigrayan forces. This was not peace. This was a military pact against a common enemy, and that common enemy was the TPLF. Amnesty International said in a statement on Thursday that it could confirm that, quote, scores and likely hundreds of people were stabbed or hacked to death. Just what Amnesty International said was that they, they've been told by witnesses that the kind of breakaway group, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, uh, carried out the massacres after they'd suffered a military defeat uh, from uh, the Prime Minister's forces. You have changed your views in this last year of the man you nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. He said, I am the peacemaker, I am the victim. Remember his name because he won the Nobel Peace Prize last year. But there is, I think, an international suspicion that this is part of an attempt uh, to unilaterally extend his term. Now I realize that that was simply a strategic movement on his part to gain political support from key political constituencies until such time that he consented enough power and moves forward with his personal agenda. Hailing a new era of peace in the region, we turn now to look at how just one year later, Abiy Ahmed's military has displaced tens of thousands of civilians in the ongoing military campaign in the northern Tigray region. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has awarded the Peace Prize, so why is he choosing to resort to bombs and bullets to settle this dispute? He sees the sky as the limit. He sees that he has a, a personal mission 
that he can fulfill with the blessing of God. He won the peace prize because he changed Ethiopia. He, he made peace with Eritrea, uh, which is Ethiopia's mortal enemy. He, he brought democratic reforms. People on the streets used to tell me that he was a gift from God, but now he's in the middle of this war. And so the onslaught continues. The authorities say they are making a final push towards the regional capital, Mekele, after a deadline for local leaders to surrender passed. But there is doubt Ethiopia's former rulers, who controlled the government and the military for close to three decades, will be subdued quickly.